Ja. Øh, ja, jeg har lovet at gøre det her på engelsk, så øh, man, hvis, jeg forstår godt svensk, så hvis I stiller spørgsmål på svensk, så gør I bare det. Uh, but I'm Jacob, and I'm from the Danish National Museum of Science and Technology, and uh, I was invited here to speak about our process of redeveloping the museum. I don't know how many of you know about the museum. Um, a few, um, but it's been a bit perhaps neglected for some years. Uh, so we are in a turnaround now to completely redevelop the museum and also move the museum into a new place and into a new building. But I mo mostly speak about the, how we are thinking about content and redeveloping um, the new museum, what kind of museum we envision. Um, and I'll start by asking this question, this is what I'll talk about uh, what visions for the future can be explored in the matrix of museum citizens and society in the digital aid. Um, and I'll just start to talk a bit about the museum for those of you who don't know about it. So we are the National Museum of Science and Technology in Denmark, so we have a national responsibility to collect and um, material related to the technical and industrial development of Denmark. We are from 1911 and we were established by Danish Industry, which is the largest uh, NGO or organization for industry in Denmark and they are still our primary stakeholders. And we were also established by the Craftsmen's Association in Copenhagen, so we also, th those are also very important stakeholders for us. Uh, so we have anything to do with technology and industry in our collection and that's quite a lot. We have a huge collection of uh, objects related to transportation, uh, cars, motorbikes, bicycles, airplanes. Uh, a highlight in our collection is the first car in Denmark from 1888. It was, uh, it's only two years older than the first car from 8086, uh, built in Germany, and the car can still drive, so it's actually the world's oldest functioning car. We still drive it once in a while. Um, we also, in our airplane collection, we have the original airplane of Elhammer, who was one of the first to uh, fly in Europe in, uh, in 1906, I believe it was, or oh, fly. Uh, <laughs> he, um, and um, we have a um, collection of prototypes from the Danish uh, patent agency. So we have all the prototypes that has been sent into the agency for more than 100 years. So we have the original Lego in our collection, for instance. But it's also um, a very interesting collection because of a lot of these prototypes of course also failures. So a lot of them never became successes. So it's a very nice collection to discuss what makes uh, an innovation a success and what makes it a failure. And this year, this is our newest acquisition. Uh, this year we got the, um, a space capsule from Russia. Uh, this was the space capsule that brought the first Dane into space in 2015. And it's one of only three sp space capsules that has escaped Russia. <laughs> There's one in the Science Museum in, uh, in London, on the Science Museum Group. It's touring in England right now. And there's one in the ESA headquarter in, in Holland. So we're quite... Uh, happy uh, that we got this uh, from Russia, um, especially with everything going on right now. So the museum is now located north of Copenhagen in a city called um, Helsingør. And uh, what is for sure is that we are not going to be located where we are now. We are in the outskirts of the city. Uh, but we are looking into any possibilities, so the only thing I can say is that we're going to be in the greater Copenhagen area, so the green area, somewhere uh, within that circle. So I'll talk about, I will come back in the end also talk about objects and how we are working with uh, Tignes Metol. Uh, we have also visited the uh, North Tignes Museum and are also very inspired of what they're doing, so I'll talk about that in the end. Um, but this is very important for us in rethinking the museum, being relevant. At the moment, uh, this year, we will set a visitor record at the museum. We already beat the record from last year, um, but we still only have around 65,000 visitors a year. Uh, five years ago, we were around 45,000, uh, but that's nothing compared to what 
a, t a science museum should be. We are like technology is relevant for everyone. So of course we want to be relevant for more people. So this is um, very important for us. So like we want to reflect different kind of people. So the way the museum has been run so far is that they're focusing very much on the technical part of the objects, but now how these objects relate to people and society in general. So we want to include a lot of different kind of people. We're not just looking into visitors' numbers, but we want to include a lot of different kind of people into the museum and have their voices heard and reflected in the, uh, in the museum, in the exhibition, in the programs that we, that we run. So it, without re regard to age, educational background, ethnicity, spirituality, gender, sexual orientation, interests, lifestyles, lifestyles, and also political views. Uh, and poss possibly a lot more. But just to show you that we really have this broad perspective of people and how different people actually are. Um, and how we're doing this is, of course, this is not new to you, but we are w working a lot with co-creation. So work, work with different kind of people in everything we do. So it's not just the museum's voice that you meet in the museum, but it's a lot of different kind of voices that you meet, a lot of different kind of perspectives on our uh, objects. So everything is co-created. We are um, entering into learning partnerships with a lot of organizations, educational institutions, uh, learning partnerships with companies as well. Uh, and it's quite important for us to call it a learning partnership because it's not just a partnership. Learning is that we get something out of the partnership, but the uh, people that we're working with or the organization that we're working with is also getting something out of this uh, collaboration. Then we are just trying to talk with our stakeholders. We have been very much um, disengaged from uh, our primary stakeholders, which is Danish industry. Uh, so just uh, go into a dialogue with them. How do they, uh, what, sh what should a new uh, science museum be in order to be relevant for them? Uh, and a major thing is organizational transformation. I think every transformation that we're doing in museums comes back to this. That it's so easy to talk about transformation, but it's still the people who are employed at the museum that can be um, a challenge for some of the transformation we want to make. And it's the same as our museum, but it's very much a process. Um, so we're working on that. Uh, all the time to transform the way we think uh, in our in our organization. So what we've done so far is that we uh, we're two years into the process, so we're just about to make like the final visions for the museum, and then we're going into all this competition of developing uh, the building and exhibitions and all that. But we did a national and international benchmark against science museums, and this is just some of. Um, the key results. Uh, so we visited a lot of science museums, including the Technische Museum here, um, and we saw that a lot of science museums are now investing a lot in science center galleries. Um, all science museums have that today, and we don't know if that's the way forward. This is just what we've seen. Like this is, it's a merge of science museums and science centers. Uh, then are science museums primary children museums? It seems like for a lot of science museums, the primary target groups are children and, um, and families with, with younger children. Um, that's a good thing because they have a good time in a science museum. But what for the rest? Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the science gallery in, uh, in Dublin, which is a science center, but their primary target group is uh, people between 15 and 25, so they're building a science center for young people. It's quite amazing what they're doing there. But just to, I still think a science museum should be for children, but it's goddamn also relevant for a lot of uh, the rest of us. Like young people like me, this, uh, my phone, is uh, uh, has such a huge influence of my life. And a science museum should be a place where we can discuss how technology is also affecting the way the rest of us lives. And then I put art museums here. It's not like 
in a way, some science museums is very um, um, influenced by what, what science museums are doing. But in fact, art museums are becoming very much science museums. Like there's so much modern and contemporary art that is digital and that is uh, questioning how technology is affecting our lives. So if we're not stepping up, I think art museums are going to be like a huge competitor to science museums. I think it's a good thing because they're just putting focus on what science and technology does to our lives, but they are very much going in the way um, or dealing with content that usually was uh, only dealt with in science museums. So we're discussing how do we as science museums address, how do we as the Danish Science Museum address, for instance, the fourth industrial re revolution, how do we provide the skills and the behavior needed for uh, meeting the challenges of the 21st century? And how do we work with the UN development goals, as you are also working with here at the Technical Museum? I saw that. And we have turned to this um, research done by the Science Museum in London and King College in London, Science Capital. I don't know if you're familiar with that term, uh, but it's a new way of looking at science communication. I don't want to go into that. We can discuss that later. But we are very much uh, inspired by that. Um, I'll just briefly talk about core narratives in the new museum. Uh, we developed this strategic framework, framework for how we are dealing with content in the new museum. So everything is centered around people and culture, technology and industry, and global and local challenges. And what you will meet in the new museum what we are dealing with is this curiosity, science, innovation, making, using, design, and sustainability. Uh, so what you see here should be, in one way or other, be implemented in all exhibition and all programs. And this is um, how we are approaching uh, the content from a historical perspective. We care about the present, we want to create a better future, and we are empowered by the past. And it's super important for us that the first line is about the present. It's not about the past. Present and everything that is going on today is the most important thing. Then we use the history, our collection, the past, to give inspiration and reflections and perspectives of what's going on today. So present is uh, the most important thing in the new museum. And of course, we're dealing with these, uh, and I'm sure you're all familiar with them. I just want to talk about one of them, and that's uh, number five, gender equality. It's not only in Sweden that you talk about gender equality. It's not a big thing in Denmark, but for me, it's super important to talk about gender equality in a science museum. Like, there's so, the story that you see in a science museum is often the white male story. And of course, there is a lot of men uh, who made these inventions that are part of our collections, but there's also so many women. They're just not part of our collection. And because they're not part of our collection, does this mean that they didn't exist? No, it doesn't. And we have a lot of um, um, objects in our collections where it said it was a male uh, inventor or researcher who, who made this, but when we dig into it, it was actually a woman who was a, a driving force. So just at least reflect it in our practice and the way that we curate uh, um, our exhibitions and programs. I don't want to go into this, but this is um, where we are right now, like the topics that we're going to deal with um, in the new museum. It not, not necessarily this means that all of this will be galleries or exhibitions. It can also be programs or events, but this is what we are, um, where we are right now. I think this, uh, our lives, I just want to put a f add a few words to that, <laughs> like how technology is affecting the way we live and uh, the way that, for instance, we communicate with each other, how the smartphone has changed the way we communicate. Yeah. Um, and this might not seem very radical, but for our museum, it's quite different what you see today. Um, so we developed this, uh, we call Studio 4.0. Uh, it's uh, So we use the ex existing museum as a laboratory to uh, gain experiences and knowledge on how to create the new museum. So everything that we do today is experiments. And I just talk uh, a little bit, a bit about some of the experiments. This is one of the experimental exhibitions we uh, we made. It called, it's called uh, Smartphomania. 
and uh, it's an exhibition about how communication has changed and how, uh, for instance, the modern smartphone affects the way that we communicate with each other and how technology is affecting the way we live. Uh, and um, this is the center of the um, exhibition and everything that you meet in the heart of exhibition is about present. So how about digital behavior, about um, digital um, porn and all of this that the young people that we bring into our, into our programs, what they meet on a daily life. So we start with everything, something that they can relate to. Uh, very basic, there's a lot of places in this exhibition where you can sit and we did a lot of research into how long people are staying in the exhibition and just because they can sit in there and uh, engage with the material, they're staying much longer than in a lot of other uh, of our exhibitions. Um, we are dealing with different themes in the, um, <laughs> in the um, exhibition, for instance, innovations where we are presenting some of the big Danish innovations that has resulted in uh, in the smartphone today. Um, we also made a lot of um, places in the exhibitions where the visitors can contribute with content uh, to the exhibition. This is an analog uh, app wall where they can draw, for instance, their favorite app or how the smartphone, something that they use a smartphone on magnets and put on this uh, huge wall. Um, we also have this uh, room. Um, this is a lot of different kind of technologies that is in the smartphone today. Uh, so for instance, in our collection, we have 850 radios and uh, we don't know much about them. I think that's quite similar to a lot of science museums that they have a lot of radios, uh, telephones. So in this room, we are discussing what these uh, objects mean to people. Uh, so people can, uh, for instance, if they find uh, a radio that they used to have in the 60s, they can share their stories about it using their mobile phone, write a text, and it will go on these screens. Um, so this way we are all the time creating new knowledge about our collection. This is another project uh, we're working on the, I was talking about the collection of prototypes. So we're making a digital platform of innovations going into our 2000, looking out at our 2500 prototypes from the collection of prototypes. Um, we don't know anything about these prototypes, so we are engaging like a huge community of engineers and people who are interested in technology across the country. We have partnered up with the largest uh, newspaper for engineers in Denmark, and so all their members as a huge community, they are co-creating the content about these uh, um, innovations that we have in the collection. And in 2020, this will be one of our um, biggest project. It's a 200 years anniversary of the discovery of electromagnetism uh, by Danish researcher Ørsted. And we have the entire collection of Ørsted. Um, at the museum, for instance, this compass, uh, and this is the compass that he used in 1820 to discover electromagnetism. And um, what we are trying to do with this project uh, we're taking everything that we're doing with Ørsted uh, out of the museum. So of course we're making an exhibition, but it will be a traveling exhibition, so we reach out to different parts of the country that are not visiting the museum today. We are making a lot of different uh, activities, events, digital content around Ørsted, so we are trying to bring what we do out to where people are and not just try to get them, I'm done now, <laughs> uh, into the museum. And the last thing that we're also working on is Tingnes Motor. Uh, so we have uh, partnered up with a former project leader from the um, project in Norway. She moved to Denmark. She found a boyfriend in Denmark. So <laughs> she lives there now. So we are trying, we're just uh, applying for funds for a PhD project that she will, uh, if we get the money, she will do at the museum to like, uh, it will be like, for her, it will be like Tingnes Motor. Uh, like volume two, so she will take all her knowledge from Norway and implement it in um, in our collection and what we do. So she will do a lot of experimental exhibition projects to get a lot of different experiences so we have more knowledge what our collection can do before investing a lot of money into new uh, exhibitions. I'm done. Yes. <laughs>